now take you to the broadcast of It's Time with Reverend Nathaniel W. Martin. Here is Reverend Martin. Thank you, uh, Dr. Blackwell. And let me say hotep, habaragani, to my Africana Studies colleagues and contemporaries and seekers after the truth all. And let me hasten to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, but never good night and certainly never uh, <coughs> goodbye because I always found goodbyes traumatizing. I said personally I find goodbyes traumatizing. My name is the Reverend Nathaniel Wayne Martin. I'm the pastor of the New Life Institutional Baptist Church here in the city of Los Angeles. And uh, we're located at 8916 South Main Street. And we're being hosted by our sister church, the Shiloh Missionary uh, Christian Church, of whom uh, the Reverend Dr. Della F. Holland is, is my, is the pastor, rather, and is my good friend. And uh, when you're in the area or you think about us, come on by. Uh, we'll be glad to receive you and and, hot, and share our hospitality with you and the word of God as we worship, okay? Amen. 8916 South Main Street, New Life Institutional Baptist Church. All right, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one service. Two churches, but just one service. Uh, so we ask you to invite you to, and welcome you and encourage you uh, to come on by and share with us in our services. All right, uh, this offering is a uh, social justice offering and uh, what we try not to do is do get into the hoobalistics. Uh, we try to approach the current events from uh, a biblical point of view or from what the view that God has of the things that we are doing. Uh, <clears throat> and surely as I've uh, said before we are in a tizzy uh, in the nation and uh, in the world. So uh, our prayers must be redoubled. We're going to need to turn some plates down. So must that's on medicine. Going to have to come off the medicines so we can do a day of fasting once a week, preferably on Wednesday, and uh, that we may uh, beseech God to, that as he heard the prayers of the people in Nineveh and uh, save them from destruction. It didn't come in that generation. So we, we may, so we may, we also may be spared the destruction uh, that we see uh, looming on the horizon and in the background. Uh, as we say, uh, Stevie Wonder could see that the war is coming and the destruction uh, is increasing, uh, not only internationally but domestically uh, as well. Uh, amen. A blind man can see that. Uh, our scripture reading for this uh, time is uh, John chapter 7, picking up the reading at verse uh, seven, 16. Jesus, Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself the word of god for the people of god amen now to the unrest on our college campuses around the nation uh here at uh in los angeles at usc the uh they canceled the valedictorians uh address which was which has always been a singular uh, moment that the highest scoring uh, student kept their GPA up high would give the uh, the goodbye address. That's what valedictorian, uh, valedictory uh, means. It's, it's a Latin word, and uh, most of us don't speak no Latin. I know I certainly don't uh, speak Latin, but uh, that's what valed valedictory, as the Latin word says, means. It means to say goodbye. Uh, and it's the goodbye address by the top student uh, with the highest ranking GPA uh, in that uh, particular university at that graduation uh, class. Uh, the girl's name was uh, Asna Tavasam, young lady's name, I should say. 
was asna to Basim and she was uh, informed that she could not, uh, she would not be giving the uh, valedictory uh, address. And the valedictory address started back in 1772 when uh, a uh, an English, excuse me, an Englishman by the name of Norborn Berkeley, and but his uh, alias, his AKA that he went by was Lord Barton Tort. You can look that up. Uh, and what he was, uh, he was so pleased with the colony and so pleased with the college, it was William and Mary's College, and. Uh, <clears throat> William and Mary's College, of course, was only to educate the elite. Uh, no, no descendants of slaves and no slaves, so no and uh, no Negroes was in that. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, this was in <clears throat> excuse me in Virginia, and uh, this uh, Lord Bolton toward put up a gold prize, a prize. Uh, to the highest, to the student rather, who was the most skilled in Latin, and uh, and in the written composition and oratory, naturally, uh, a Victoria student was uh, designated the valedictorian uh, for that uh, class. Uh, some history behind that uh, valedictorian thing. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sure some of you were around, I know I was around. In 2010, a uh, student named uh, Katie Washington Cole, uh, let me get this right. Yeah, Katie Washington Cole, she was the 2010 valedictorian at Notre, Notre Dame. Uh, first black, by the way. <clears throat> Later on, Jasmine Shepherd in uh, Mississippi Delta uh, had to sue the uh, Mississippi Delta School District for forcing her to share the valedictorian honor with a white student in 2016 whose GPA was lower. Hmm? More things, uh, the longer that you live, the more you see how things are, are, are not really uh, changed. Uh, and so, uh, let me see, and then there was a Natalie Ramos, uh, from, uh, Jesse Bethel High School in Vallejo, California. That's out here where I am. And she was told she would have to share the honor, the valedictorian honor with nine other people. And uh, it raised such a stink that uh, the uh, school, this was in high school now, remember it started uh, in the college, but then it filtered down uh, to the uh, high school level. So they have a valedictorian speaker at, at the high school. We had a valedictorian speaker at my high school. And no, it wasn't me. <laughs> but the, the first with the greatest, highest uh, grade point average. And, uh, and by that time, they weren't worrying about could you speak Latin no more? And uh, but can you get your? Could you keep your grades up? And could you excel uh, in your studies? Which is what we want of our children and students in our uh, schools and colleges today. We want you to do your best uh, because you ain't got to work on no job. All you got to do is go to school, uh, come home, do a little bit of cleaning up, and uh, get your homework. And then you can look at the at the, at the uh, internet and the television, all all of that. But we want you to do what? Get your keep your grades up. Uh, make the most of this 12 years of free education that uh, your, your mothers and fathers are paying with their tax money uh, uh, for you. No excuse for you not to do your best uh, when you're given this opportunity. Uh, I, I know it's hard and. Uh, the money is, uh, things are getting higher and uh, all of that, but you still got to do your best to justify uh, the sacrifice that parents are making to get their kids an education and get a head start in life because uh, 
They don't care nothing about you out here. Somebody need to say amen. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. I said she, uh, it was a snake was this girl, Natalie, Natalie Ramos. She was the first, going to be the first Latina in her school to be the valedictorian. And they almost messed that up by saying that she had to share the honor with nine other students who didn't have as high a, a GPA as she had. Uh, hers was four, 4.0 GPA. Uh, the nearest one uh, was after her was 3.9 and so on and so on down the line. And so after the uh, stink, uh, the principal recalculated the uh, GPAs and updated the, uh, the uh, uh, grade postings, grade listings. And uh, this girl was Natalie Ramos <coughs> in Vallejo. Lord help me. Uh, finally got the, the honor of doing the valedictorian address. And as we said, the valedictorian address. Uh, for all of that name is just a uh, uh, Latin word for goodbye. We we're saying we come to say goodbye, and uh, it has become politicized. The valedictorian has become politicized. Like we said, they we didn't want this girl to. Uh, excuse me. Her name is uh, Asna Tabasum. I may be butchering that name, but that's what it is. Asna first name. Tabasum, Tabasum is her last name at USC. She was told she was going to be the valedictorian. And then when they found out she was pro-Palestinian, they withdrew the offer. And uh, the president of USC has now <laughs> canceled all the commencement exercises across the board. And so uh, that means parents that were getting ready to come see their child, that uh, walk across the stage, hear their name called. Uh, if you've been spending that money for that tuition all and treading water all these years, and they finally gonna gonna get that commencement, Lord, how much do you want to be there to see that child uh, walk across that stage? Say, that's my son. That's my daughter. Finally got some good out of all that money we've been spending. But the, in the wisdom of the president of USC, uh, with the current unrest on campus and around the world, plus with the uh, Biden administration uh, calling the protesters uh, anti-Semites, I don't know where he got that from, uh, because if, they were gonna, if, if he had said it was un-American, Maybe it would have been better, but he called them anti-Semite. And I thought uh, the president of the United States' allegiance was to the people of the United States, uh, uh, to the flag, for uh, 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 the Pledge of Allegiance, and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, I thought that the president of the United States of America was dedicated to looking out for the best interests of the people of the United States of America. But this president is looking out for the benefit and the advantage of another country, Israel. And uh, so uh, we're going to have to rethink uh, a lot of assumptions that we make about the uh, loyalty of the people that we put in these uh, offices. Uh, the president and vice president both swear on a stack of Bibles. You and I saw the inauguration of uh, of uh, uh, Joseph Robinette Biden and uh, Kamala uh, Harris, I forget her first name, I mean her middle name, uh, but they swore to uphold the laws of the Constitution of the United States of America. They did not swear to uphold the laws of the Constitution of Israel, but yet uh, they're so obsessed with Israel uh, that they are overthrowing the government of the United States in order to what? Promote Israel. And uh, I find that quizzical, perplexing, uh, because uh, as I've said before, uh, you're supposed to be looking after our best interests. And uh, that's why uh, 
I think he's going to have a hard time getting reelected because he's alienated, alienating all of these uh, young people. Uh, I, I guess he didn't know there were so many uh, Palestinian people in America, and I guess he didn't know there were a lot of Jews in America who do not hold with what Netanyahu is doing over there in Palestine. And uh, these things are going to come back uh, soon and, and, you know, bite uh, everybody on the, on the what you call it. I want to cuss in here because it's not my station. Uh, and uh, I find it puzzling, perplexing. Hmm? Uh, you can be supporting another country in the, uh, in, in, when you uh, were, were supposed to be uphold your own country, you know, as like a man, a husband looking after another woman, and he, he got, a, and he got a wife. You know, something wrong there with that picture, and uh, you need to get that picture straightened out and uh, get the deficiency or the this anomaly, or uh, this defect cured uh, before it uh, creates a further schism uh, in the body. I don't know how the Democrats expect to win in. In November, if they're alienating the people that got to go vote for them, you know I'm saying, and uh, all they're asking for is a ceasefire in Gaza, and they're asking uh, uh, Joe Biden to recognize that the the country, the nation that he's supporting, uh, with all of our tax dollars and all of, and and, uh, and uh, all of our uh, goodwill, uh, is a rogue nation, is a war crime. A, a war crime nation uh, that the International Court of Justice has uh, said that it is highly plausible that the uh, uh, state of Israel, a uh, country of Israel, nation of Israel, is uh, committing war crimes uh, in the in the name of uh, of uh, of Israel, of the Israelis, and uh, these uh, partisan. Uh, bitterly uh, uh, racist uh, people that Net Netanyahu has in his cabinet uh, are controlling the the greatest country on, in the world, and that's the United States of America. Uh, Netanyahu acts like he's the president of the United States of America. He does what he wants. He take he doesn't he, he bypasses the uh, uh, president of, of the country and uh, thumbs his nose at the uh, president and vice president of the country and they uh, like uh, slaves, slavishly uh, if you remember that uh, caricature that was going around when Bush was invaded Iraq and Tony, had Tony Blair uh, he was tra trailing Tony Blair behind him and this was a caricature uh, uh, behind him, and uh, the uh, image was of Tony Blair was uh, uh, constantly uh, uh, bumping the uh, rear exterior portions, lower rim exterior portion of uh, George Bush, which means George Bush was just leading England uh, in this uh, rush to war with Iraq to find uh, to find the WMDs, and which to this date they never have found. <laughs> Not as much as a gram of WMD, but they have uh, had regime regime re, 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 regime change, and uh, they have uh, uh, assassinated the uh, the uh, uh, leader at that time, uh, <coughs> uh, Hussein, and. Uh, and we didn't, like I said, we what we went to war for, it turned out to be a big shining light, a bright shining light. Because we ain't found no w WMD, weapons of mass destruction, or yellow cake, as uh, the late uh, Colin Powell uh, said to the UN, we said, we got they got yellow cake over there. We, we, we know where it's at. And they ain't found no yellow cake, no blue cake, no red cake, no cake at all. And they devastated that country. Uh, of course, we all realized it was for uh, Dick Cheney and Halliburton and uh, Brown and Root to get that oil. That's some of the purest oil in the world. 
uh, there in Iraq. But let me not uh, digress. Uh, even though it's analogous to what is uh, what the uh, Israelis are doing to the Palestinians, because uh, there are rumors that uh, uh, Donald Trump's son uh, is uh, foaming at the mouth to get that real estate, that land over there, and uh, turn it into uh, something else. So there's always a, a dead cat on the line. You just follow that money. <laughs> You'll find you You will find him. Don't believe the hype about patriotism and uh, Zionism. No such thing. Uh, those people, and, uh, the, the kicker of it all uh, for me is that uh, as long as I can send my money, me, my black self, send my money over there, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. But if I were to tell the Israelis, well, now I want to move, I want to buy some property there uh, in Israel, uh, you would be received like a lump of lead falling into the uh, ocean. Uh, you fall straight to the bottom because they are just as racist against uh, blacks as they are against Palestinians. And uh, they, only, they only want a Jewish state. And uh, they being the Ashkenazi uh, Jews and not the original Jews of, that were uh, put out of that land uh, because the original Jews look like you, uh, look like me. Uh, they were dark. Uh, and, and the evidence is, is relevant and uh, the research has already been done uh, by, by so many other uh, uh, scholars. And so uh, maybe that was why I talk about it, put the, the Jews out <laughs> of Spain because they were black. <laughs> <laughs> You can't make this stuff up, folks. But uh, those people that are there now, uh, they, they are more or less white people. And uh, they uphold white supremacy. And they do not like uh, no black persons over there. They even segregate the, uh, <clears throat> the uh, Jews, the Ethiopian Jews, Ethiopian uh, Jews uh, from their own uh, blood supply. And uh, I know they were there, uh, there was a shortage of blood in Israel uh, about 10 years back uh, when the Falasha Jews were airlifted from Ethiopia uh, to Israel. And they have created a, a ghetto where they put the Falasha Jews uh, separate from these Ashkenazi Jews. And the Ashkenazi Jews do not want the blood from these Felucians. You hear me? In their blood supply. So uh, when the Felucia Jews uh, went to uh, uh, donate blood, that blood was thrown out the back door. It was thrown away uh, because uh, they are not uh, considered as a part of, uh, of this Israel. And... Uh, that I find is a very horrible way that uh, racism is rearing its ugly head over there in uh, in Israel, and so you're going to have to redouble your prayers. You're going to have to do more study and uh, pray God will give you insight uh, into the. Uh, labyrinthine depths of the hearts of the people in power. Uh, because like I said, this Netanyahu, he's holding on to power and uh, the zealots uh, that uh, he has surrounded himself with uh, want to actually exterminate, uh, extirpate uh, every uh, a Palestinian in Gaza and really every Palestinian in the West Bank. Because remember, Hamas is not in the West Bank. But the Jews are doing in the West Bank almost the same thing that they're doing in uh, in Gaza. They're taking the land. All right, thank you, sir. 
They're taking the land and driving the people out of their homes in the middle of the night and uh, refusing to let them come back to their own places, even though the people still have the keys to the front doors of their houses. But they have been uh, supplanted uh, from their own homes, uh, driven away uh, from their own homes. And these people are usurping uh, their their residences, their houses, the places where uh, they farm for generations. And so you can see that we're going all going to hell in a handbasket. I was looking at an old uh, Lewis Carroll uh, poem, which says, The time has come, the walrus said, to speak of many things, uh, of, ship, of shoes and sh ships and sealing wax, of cabbages and kings and why the sea is boiling hot and whether the pigs have wings. Absurdity of the matter is uh, apparent to anyone who will uh, take the time to look and see and uh, with with open eyes, not with biased eyes. Uh, what we have over here now in, in our government, our government has been hijacked uh, by the Democrats. Uh, Joseph Robinette Biden uh, has al already stated that he is a Zionist. You don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist. Well, a Zionist wants all the land uh, from the sea to the river for as a Jewish state. No room for Palestine. No room for a uh, two-state solution. And uh, if you look, if you research, uh, I think I brought that book in here, The Jewish Lo Lobby. That's my friend, Reverend Gary Williams. I had to call him back. And, uh, but uh, what is happening is that uh, the uh, Netanyahu really has finally came out and stated about two months ago that he does not want a two-state solution. He does not want the, uh, the Palestinians in there. He wants that all of the land from the river to the sea for the uh, enjoyment of of uh, his brand of uh, Jew. And so uh, that is the state of things as they are at this hour. And uh, remember, the United States always wanted a two-state solution. But according to my reading, the uh, Israel lobby successfully scuttled that generations ago, way back then, uh, when Yasser Arafat and uh, those guys were living, uh, they had an opportunity to really actually have a two-state when there were enough uh, Palestinians around and land enough for that two-state solution. But the Jews wouldn't have it. They, they bypassed all of that. So uh, it has been carefully orchestrated, this, this that's going on right now, has been carefully orchestrated step by step and the U.S. has gone along like a little puppy dog as though uh, the uh, whoever was the prime minister or the president of Israel was also de facto by default the president of the United States because we we just went right along with it and uh, now it is actually uh, for the land it is too late uh, you can't have, there's not, not enough land to have a two-state solution. And with all of the apartheid that the Israelis have been practicing against the uh, Palestinians, uh, they, they have reduced them to a subclass, a subject of people. And uh, uh, that's why all of these upheavals are going to continue because the Jews have their next foot on the necks of the uh, Palestinians. And it's plain for all the world to see, all the world to look at. But uh, as I get out of here, go to church, pray much, study much, and pray some more. Because, like I said, it's going to get worse before we ever see anything better. And uh, hats off to the uh, Volkswagen people. They got a, they got a, a union. And uh, as I close, 
as I always say, if you're working on a job or in a business for somebody else and they don't like to pay you good money for your labor, take my advice, get yourself, uh, don't waste your career, don't waste your energy, don't waste your time, don't waste your life. If they don't want to pay you, don't work further. Thank you. All right, Doc, we out of here.